Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the Jujubees today. And we're also gonna be looking at an apple I picked this morning. Uh, we have ourselves over here a Priscilla apple. And I figured, you know, it'd be a nice little comparison comparing the apple to the jujube, which a lot of people describe the jujube in its less ripe state as an apple. Um, what the jujube does is that it it's kind of crisp and firm like an apple right now, and then it'll start to turn red. It has this red blush on it right now, but it'll turn fully red, and then it will um, shrivel up and actually have a very different texture. It'll sweeten up a, li a little bit, so I figure we can kind of pick one of these here. I think this one might be the furthest along. And we'll pick this here and we'll kind of compare it to our apple variety. Kind of do like two birds and one stone, something a little different. Um, so we'll see. I think this will be a nice little interesting video. You can see here's that redness that it gets that's really starting to form now. Um, and eventually, like I said, the whole thing will turn red and shrivel up. So let's compare these two different fruits here. First, I want to take a bite of the apple and I want to smell it. Because these apples, guys, have like the best smell. They really do have some crazy aromas to them. And I'm not really picking up too much of the craziest aroma on this one, but so far out of all the apples I've had in the backyard, they all smell like a candle, like a very fake smell. But it's it's just it was crazy to me that to learn that this is something that actually exists in nature. So let me take a bite of this. Wow. Wow. So that reminds me very much of like a a Macintosh apple. This is not going to be a good comparison because it's kind of almost mealy on the inside, um, very grainy, which like I would con I would say a Macintosh apple sort of is um, a softer texture, not as crisp. I don't like I like Macintosh apples a lot. It's actually my favorite apple that you can get at the store. Uh, they're also the freshest apple you can get at the store. But it's got decent flavor, not as good as the Macintosh, that's for sure. I wonder if this has Macintosh in its parentage or not. I think it was bred, the Priscilla apple was bred by Rutgers and two other universities or something that came together and, and, uh, and bred that one. But it's not as good. It's, very, it's supposed to be a very disease-resistant apple variety, which is exactly why I have it here in this climate. But let's try the jujube now. And it should have that really crisp apple-like texture to it. Yeah, I don't know if you guys heard that. Yeah. So it is very much like an apple, and, but it's way more crisp. Very different texture, at least from that apple there. And you can see it has a pit on the inside. I would say they're equally as sweet right now, which is kind of crazy. They're, this is a very sweet piece of fruit, this sujuba here. I'm surprised. It's one of my favorites. It's becoming... Definitely one of my favorites, and I think the, the big key here in my climate is to grow them in pots and to get them off to a really nice head start. These jujubes woke up, um, I want to say April 15th, here on the patio. That's really unheard of. And you can see they've got nice fruit set. Some of these trees are really loaded. You can really see the size of them now coming in. Um, I think they're done setting at this point. There's some decent production on this variety. There's a lot more on the back, but 
I think two varieties here. I think this one here is my, I think that's my honey jar right there, which is seemingly the most productive. And then also the Zuzhou, which we just got, we grafted this one last year. So I wanna say they're quite productive depending on the variety. Um, my Lee is not really producing all that much this year. Quite a bit of a shame, but you can see some fruits down in there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like an alternative to apples in that they don't really get, uh, you know, all the disease, all the issues that you have with them. Yeah, you should grow them in pots here. You can grow them in the ground, but the texture and the flavor is so similar like this. And if you don't really like that, you want something different than an apple because apples are just apples, right? It's hard to beat an apple. Then just let them dry up on the tree and it's a completely different fruit. So for me, it's just a, it's a wonderful thing to grow, both of them, the apple and the jujube. We've covered many videos on the jujubes. I won't talk too much more about them, but the apples over here, what we're doing today is I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna do some summer pruning. But because these apples really are not doing so hot in this location, we just transplanted them all in. They're on weaker rootstocks. What I'm gonna do is leave them be. I'm going to let them grow for maybe uh, another year or two, not prune them at all. You can see this guy over here though is getting some nice lanky growth on it. So maybe I will come in here and just kind of check some of this, this higher growth and bring it back. Try to get it to, you know, branch out a bit more with that summer pruning and also form some fruit spurs uh, right now. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little quick one on the comparison between a jujube and an apple, I certainly enjoyed both of them. They're really good. Um, definitely recommend both of them here in this climate. And we'll talk to you all soon, all right? Take care, guys. See you for tomorrow's video.